Hello people, today I'm going to be doing a review of the new Netflix slash Vanessa Kirby movie, Pieces of a Woman. I didn't know what this movie was about when I walked into it. I knew Vanessa Kirby's in it. I knew Shia LaBeouf's in it. I know the title was Pieces of a Woman and it was released on Netflix. That's all I knew. And so I walked into this movie completely blind and yeah, I, I really liked it. But I wanna, I don't want to sound like every single critic out there, but I have to say it. I have to say it. You're going to hear this in every single review. The first 30 minutes does not compare to the rest of the movie. I don't want to sound like everyone else. I don't want to sound like I'm copying it. But the first 30 minutes is just leaps and bounds beyond the um, rest of the movie. And I'm not saying the rest of the movie is bad. The rest of the movie is really good. It's just... If I, I'd say if the first 30 minutes was consistently good, if the rest of the movie was consistently good as the first 30 minutes, it'd probably be one of my favorite movies of all time. But the, the first 30 minutes is masterfully crafted. And yeah, I just, I think everyone should know that so they could lower their expectations about 30 minutes in. Because I remember once the big scene kind of stopped, I um, paused it to see what time it was. 30 minutes so ex exactly half an hour so yeah and my only problem with the movie is the same problem i have with almost every single um like oscar contender or awards movie and it's about 10 to 10 15 maybe 20 minutes too long you just shave it off a little bit but th besides that there's really no other big problems where i'm like that's a problem with the movie so let's get into what I really liked. First off, Vanessa Kirby gives the best performance I've ever seen her give. Of course, I've only really seen her in Mission Impossible Fallout and Hobbs and Shaw. So besides that, I haven't really seen her do much, but wow, she gives one amazing performance in this movie. Um, I remember at the end of my Nomadland review, I, w I said, um, I'm going to be comparing these two performances with um, Frances McDarwin versus um, Vanessa Kirby. And I'd say Vanessa Kirby gives a better performance out of the two, especially within that first 30 minute scene. Definitely. Just, she, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and especially one scene towards the end of the movie where she's, um, where someone tells a story to her and then they cut right to her face after and the look on her face told the whole story of um what's going on in her head and you see that look in the trailer so it's not too spoilery that i'm saying that but wow she gives her performance is mind-blowing shia labeouf gives a fantastic performance i know they recently dropped his um awards campaign because of some abuse allegations i haven't done any research into that because i, I there's a lot of movie news and a lot of news going around right now with the, with the world state, with the state of the world that that we're in right now, I don't think Shia LaBeouf's um, abuse um, allegations is my top priority in the news as at the moment. So, um, yeah, but he did. Whether there's abuse allegations or not, or if he did abuse anyone, there's it, there's no question that he did give a fantastic performance in this movie, even if it was out of um, bad stuff. And I I'm not saying I condemn or appreciate or like any of the stuff he's allegedly have done. I'm just saying, without a doubt, he's he gave a solid, really good performance in this movie. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, the character development in this movie. He, for, I'm not, some characters get character development, but not in a good way. Some, some characters get character development in a good way. And so I'm not going to spoil exactly what character is what, because that might give away some of the movie's plot points. But the char character development for a character is really, really, really good. <laughs> I know, this movie is, um, I never thought this would be a hard movie to review, but once the premise is so simple, I don't want to give away the little details of this movie. Another thing I really liked about this movie is it's not cinematically satisfying it doesn't feel like oh we're wrapping up in the perfect way it's so perfect and yeah um th that person gets along now everyone loves each other it's great because i know one character um goes away in the movie i'm like oh they'll be back and they never come back 
like the last 15 minutes they don't come back i'm like well okay but i at the end of the day i really appreciated how they made a bold choice of not making everything like cinematically satisfying and of course we've had movies about like that um before where it all wraps up at the end but i'm glad that with a movie like this they didn't just play it safe and make everything all, like oh that's so amazing they they definitely took some risk and i'm glad that they did that um there's a lot of s symbolism in this movie and you'll know what i've been talking about um once the um it's not you really don't start to see that symbolism towards like the middle of the well the like from the middle of the movie all the way to the end there's a lot of symbolism that i really did appreciate there's a lot of long shots slash takes in this movie and all of them are really well done i know the um that 30 minute part that, I'm, that everyone's talking about um that that is supposed to look like a, a one take um but and the other thing since it was one take it made me feel like with that thirst for any minute, 30 minutes, it felt like I was there watching it. Because one, the camera work, and it was just so amazing, and, and it worked really, really well. Um, and my one of my favorite things about the movie is the very last scene. Um, it's, even though, like as I said, it's not cinematically satisfying for every aspect, the very ending, like the very last shot of the movie, is very uplifting at the end of the day. And yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. This beat No Man Land, No Mad Land for me. And I gave I gave No Man Land a seven not a seven. I gave No Mad Land a nine point two and I'm gonna give this movie a nine point three. I think this is a very good movie and I really enjoyed it. Did it beat Tenet for me? They're so close, but I do give the slight edge to Tenet just because I, I like action better than um a um, movie like this and <laughs> there's really no way to describe a movie like this a psychological deep dive and don't get me wrong i'm not i don't really have a favorite genre it's just i enjoyed tenet more than i want than this and i know tenet is tenic this is, if we're going technical this is the best movie of 2020 if we're going technical but my personal opinion is still tenet is the king of this year so far so yeah today tonight i'm going to be watching the father with An anthony hopkins i'm very much looking forward to that and yeah, my letterbox review will be up tonight, probably, if I have it up, this video up by tonight. But yeah, by the way, if you guys don't have me on Letterboxd, go check me out at Critic Kid. I know, um, my original YouTube name was Kid Critic because I started this channel when I was like, uh, 12, 12-ish. So, of course, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a child anymore, so I had to change the name of my YouTube channel, which I did to JW Reviews, and then, but Letterboxd did doesn't like you changing your name unless if I want to pay for it. And I said, no, I'm not going to pay for it. So check me out at Critic Kid where you could see my reactions and scores a lot earlier than most. So yeah, when I see and my father review and the father review will be up tomorrow on my channel. So yeah, anyways, like, share, subscribe and stuff like that and adios.